Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming. We are very happy to be here, and we will give a three-part um, introduction to our project. I will start with an introduction of actually a book. I will just show it quickly, this book here, called Putting Rehearsals to the Test, as the exhibition is also called Putting Rehearsals to the Test, with the subtitle Practices of Rehearsal in Fine Arts, Film, Theatre, Theory and Politics. So I will introduce this publication in relation to the exhibition, and I hope you don't mind that I'm going to read a text, because, um, yes, it's just like the subject matter is so complex that I can't <laughs> remember it, that I need to read it, and I hope you don't mind. It's, it's actually better for the introduction. So... Excuse us, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, um, this book that I've just been presenting to you, um, titled Putting Rehearsals to the Test, Practices of Rehearsal in Fine Arts, Film, Theatre, Theory and Politics, is published in parallel with the opening of this exhibition of the same title, except for the subtitle. It is co-edited by Sabit Buchmann, Ilse Lafer and myself, and published by Sternberg Press. The book is not understood to be a catalogue of the exhibition, but it's a reader shifting between theory and different artistic practices that encompass a wide range of subjects related to the topic of rehearsal. But before I will go into further details regarding possible notions of the concept of rehearsal, I would like to add just a few words on the history of this collaboration between Sabet Buchmann, Ilse Lafer and myself. Around the year 2012, Sabet and I started a dialogue on the subject of rehearsal, which was originally based on or related to a discussion of some of my own films, as I'm here in a kind of double function or double role as artist who is here in this exhibition, but also as one of the three curators of the exhibition, which in many ways, my film, always linked to specific forms of rehearsal in their narrative and performative setup. But very soon we realized that the potential of our newly found subject went way beyond a discussion of just my work and promised to be a very productive lens for looking at the contemporary in general. And so we set out to explore and investigate aspects of rehearsal in different ways in varying frameworks within ranges of different media and artistic practices. Quickly we became aware that while the subject of rehearsal is popular in film and theater, as well as a subject spread widely in contemporary fine arts practices, it has been scarcely considered in historical and contemporary art discourses. As both of us teach in Vienna's Academy of Fine Arts, we decided to turn our shared interest into a class, which we were co-teaching with a group of really great students. It was a lot of fun. That lasted over two semesters. Later on, we were invited by Vienna-based curator Matthias Michalka to host a program of seven evenings at the Cinema of Vienna's Museum of Modern Art, which included screenings, live performances, discussions, and panels, and which finally were concluded by a symposium held at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna in June of 2013. A number of contributions to this publication here is resulting from this symposium. Finally, the idea shaped to turn our research into the format of an exhibition, and it was our Montreal-based friend and colleague, art historian and curator Barbara Clausen, to whom we are very grateful for this, who established the link to Montreal and to the three institutions which now are the hosts of this exhibition, consisting of three chapters, as Michelle has already mentioned, taking place at Leonard Bina Ellen Gallery, the Vox Centre de l'Image Contemporain, and the SPC Gallery. In March of 2015, we asked curator Ilse Lafer to join us for the conceptual as well as spatial development of this exhibition project, which investigates the role and function of the notion of rehearsal understood as a methodology, a modus operandi, a medium, a site of representation and reflection for artistic production processes, as well as their relation to different forms of economies. The exposition of the workly quality characteristic of rehearsal formats also brings into focus the nexus between immaterial labor and immaterial media in the sense of the communication and distribution-oriented production of knowledge and information. 
The rehearsal, therefore one could say, represents a type of labor that works not only on the product to be made, but also on the maker's body. If we also define rehearsal as working on the working, it is, as Anne-Marie Matzke, one of the authors in this publication, has argued the paradigmatic scene and medium of self-transformation. To rehearse is to change oneself and what one does. Hence the hope that the rehearsal will let the artist elude the reification of their work. After the rehearsal is always before the rehearsal. To once more briefly return to our publication in the context of this exhibition project, it covers a wide range of aspects that we've been investigating and developing during the past four years, elaborated by authors who are not least key figures in their respective fields of film, theater, and media sciences and theory. As we had noticed that the notion of rehearsal has taken form in art practice, but not yet found a theoretical foundation, the publication of this reader is an essential part of our shared and, of course, still ongoing project. The topics negotiated in all in all 17 contributions and including one image stretch titled The Common Reader by artist Silke Otto Knapp, a series of unique etchings made on Captiva Island in Florida in the year of 2015. The topics range between questions of improvisation in arts and economics, questions of collaborations, modes of productions, production values, the passion in work and the workings of passion, the relation of contingency and planning, the question of what is the structure and nature of artistic labor, the juxtaposition of result-oriented procedures versus experiential constellations, investigations of how pictorial and narrative spaces in art history are linked by the subject of rehearsal, rehearsal as a political medium and tool. Oh, that got in the fold. Questions of tests, failures, and non-performances, as well as a large section of contributions dealing with the role, function, history, and appearance of rehearsal in film theoretical discourse and filmic practice. Thus, the publication attempts to connect so many varied aspects of the subject matter coming out of theatrical, artistic, filmic, and political practice to a newly still-to-be-established theoretical field towards a theory of rehearsal. It is our request to attempt to unfold the subject as a theoretical discourse, but here, of course, even more so as an exhibition constellation. And certainly, this is not a claim, but a tentative, including as well a possibility of failure and a need for new beginnings. And as we've learned in our research and work during the past years and in our many discussions, failure, though, isn't the worst thing that can happen, perhaps to the contrary. Yeah, as uh, Constanze already has mentioned, the exhibition focuses on the manifold roles and functions of rehearsal, understood as opus uh, modus operandi. As such, we regard it as a tool, methodology, and medium of translation and transformation. As the Spanish philosopher and activist José Bueso elaborates in his contribution to our book, the equivalence in other languages show an implicit normativity of the notion of rehearsal and its different semantic connotations and meanings. Rehearsal in French is translated as repetition, but in German the term is probe, understood as exercise. In Spanish, the corresponding noun is ensayo, which also means at the same time essay, trial, as in learning by trial and error, test, and or attempt. Interestingly, the complementary of ensayo as theatrical rehearsal, that is the actual staging of a show, is called representation, rep representation. The fact that the English term rehearsal resonates with theatricality that contradicts, of course, as you all might know, the formalist claim for medium specificity. This might be one reason for its missing reconsideration within fine art discourses. As also many of you might recall, the art historian and critic Michael Fried recognizes in theatricality the practices situated between the arts 
as well as between the artwork and the beholder. With this historical debate in mind, the topos of rehearsal provides an alternative approach to modern and contemporary image concepts that are interested not so much in performativity per se, then, or rather in spatial and temporal relation, that is, in the perception-oriented dimension of the picture surface and or the shape of objects. These relations that often describe an in-betweenness are exactly the moments we identify with rehearsal as a procedure that oscillates between theatricality and anti-theatricality. Our so-called Urszene, uh, in which rehearsal appears as a tool of translation and transformation of and between the media and of and between the work and the beholder, is Ivan Reiner's debut feature, Lives of Performers, from 1972. Comparable and updated procedures are, as you hopefully will see in our exhibition, versatile and fragile because they consist of movements with and between static images or pictures and objects. This is true not only for film, but also for painting, drawing, sculpture, photography, and text. The in-betweenness of those media practices serves as a site and tool of translation and transformation within processes grasped as experimental in that they attempt to integrate contingency, mistake, fresh starts and revisions into more or less classical formal problems between figure and background, narration and abstraction, picture and language, etc. They are often used to reflect an involving mise-en-scene, as well as they point to changes of given spatial relations and relations of gaze, an aspect Ilse will uh, talk about later. Changes that are in theater and film associated with the topos of backstage. The integration into media pertaining to visual arts therefore expresses a search for a systematic understanding of art practice in terms of an in the making instead of an making of. May that be on the side of production, may, be, may that be on the side of reception. The use of stage-like or scenic characters is not only practiced in contemporary art, but also in former times, as Klaus Scherübel's calendar objects demonstrate, which the institutions use for announcement of our exhibitions. It shows Edgar Degas painting the rehearsal from 1874, an emblematic year of French Impressionism. As you already have heard, the exhibition consists of three chapters which together form a kaleidoscopic constellation. Here at the Leonard and Bina Allen Gallery, it's about modeling, not about models. As it is indicated in the subtitle, linked to this space, a quote referring to Jean-Luc Godard, who as a reference keeps appearing and disappearing throughout the narr narrative of the show. This chapter focuses on notions of scripts and scripting always in relation to the question of different forms of production emerging between art, labor, economy, theory and politics. Building off of the notion of script with respect to scriptings, the exhibition narrative points toward conceptual tools and documents such as scores, notations, and actual scripts that themselves document earlier choreographies or events or contingent elements that serve as instructions for prospective actions and situations. Understood as rules that are generated through practice, these scripts render, when actualized, temporal and hierarchical distinctions between historical text and actual work. Based on a set of rules to be used as instructions for daily rehearsal and or for upcoming actions, scripts are located in the intersection and upon the fault lines between the performative and visual arts. At the same time, they deal with the 
ideas of material embodiments found between the routines and contingencies of making art. By isolating the traces of ideology in language, be it articulated through speech or extra communicative gestures, Rehearsal as a practice become as well a site and tool for dialectics of functionality and failure. Rehearsals not only reveal the ideology and normativity behind verbal and body language, but also located in visual and aesthetic conventions. This leads me very briefly to the next chapter to be open tomorrow as at SBC Gallery, entitled To Be Continued, Unfinished Repetitions. It refers to films and art practices that deal with serial procedures as well as with the idea of the incomplete or incomplete revolution. It will be accompanied by the 12 hours performance Sticky Stage by the group Discoteca Flaming Star in collaboration with Sara Pereira. The third chapter will open on Thursday at Vox, entitled In the Making, the post-traumatic image. With reference to the concept of post-traumatic theater, it poses rehearsal as a point of reference to consider the rendering of the post-traumatic image within contemporary art. Um, hello. Uh, I have been asked talking about the exhibition and um, start back to s yes, uh, Saturday where we had a small reception at our home and, and I had the opportunity to discuss with Vincent Bonin, a Canadian-based uh, curator about exhibition making. And I quote him here because I found it really interesting what he said. Um, he said, um, First, you start a lot of communications. You communicate with artists, with scholars, uh, with all people involved in the exhibition. Then at a certain point, you need to stop communicating, and you do, you do the exhibition. So actually, we just arrive out of this process of doing and now need to return to communication, which is not that easy yet. <laughs> um, anyhow, I'm, we have been asked not talking about the artworks as such, but focusing more general on the conception of the exhibition. So as already mentioned, um, yeah, I can, um, it is a kind of challenge to explain the conception of an exhibition, as it seems nearly impossible to reduce its multi-layered structure or the complex entanglement of content, method, and form to a clear and straight narration. This becomes even more complicated if this entanglement intends to address or reflect on the notion of rehearsal. Since rehearsal is at the same time, as both of you have already mentioned, uh, method or modus operandi, as well it blurs the traditional distinction between content and form. Against this backdrop, uh, we have asked ourselves if and how we would be able to do an exhibition as rehearsal, or to put it differently, to, aver to avoid, in any case, an exhibition that is an illustration of an already long-standing research. Considering all preconditions of this project, we came to the point that an exhibition as rehearsal can be seen or explored as the work that an exhibition is able to release. A work that is not always obvious and which implies rehearsal as oscillating between the making of and the processes of in the making, whereas the making of addresses rehearsal through the complex entanglement of content, method, and form, and the process of in the making, a specific kind of work that is offered or released by exactly this multi-layered entanglement. Considering work in this way, which means as a possibility or, or rather activity to enter into rehearsal processes, leads, uh, leads me to the motive of passion. Uh, or patient, as seen in Jean-Luc Godard's film of the same title, by inventing a new form of filmic storytelling based on images rather than on written screenplay, Godard's Passion explored the work on the screenplay as work with and through images. In other words, 
Passion is the realization of a yet not written screenplay, which produces the film itself as work. As such, Passion addresses a kind of in the making that Godard reveals as making of in the frame of his after film, Scenario du film Passion. This mutual relation between making of and in the making and the way how it is explored in Passion in terms of structure and method become not only the model for the conception, again the word model, um, of this research shows, but it has also been the passage, passage uh, through which I entered into the long-standing discussion and research done by Sabet um, and Constanze, as well as others. So this is not the place to go into further details or describe the complex entanglement between Godard's passion uh, and which will ex actually be screened on Friday night at the Cinematheque uh, on occasion of these exhibitions. Um, and his after film scenario, the film Passion. But I'd like to address at least one or two aspects that are important for the understanding of the concep conception of these exhibitions. It has been a challenge to conceive an exhibition that is divided into three shows, which should at the same time explore specific aspects of rehearsal, as already explained by Sabat, by considering each institutional framing, but should also be perceived as one exhibition on or as rehearsal. For this, I borrowed a methodology, methodological sorry, feature from Godard, which linked in Passion three different sites, what I then called connectors. With regards to the exhibition, it, this aspect becomes uh, come to the fore with works by Hannah Kogairos, which you see here, uh, Jutta Köter, Achim Lengerer, Gruger Badella on the wall here, um, as well as Merlin Carpenter, which are presented in sometimes two or sometimes all three spaces. They connect the exhibitions, but due to the different environment that each exhibition provides, their perception shift and therefore remains unfixable. It becomes a work that needs to be done anew. Another methodological, I'm sorry I can't pronounce this word, <laughs> methodological discursive feature that I borrowed from Godard is his formula one plus one is three. One image and another becomes, uh, become a third new one and combined it with the idea that he himself borrowed from painting, which is of pe penetrating into the image and finding a place within the image from which thoughts about the image can be articulated. What sounds more or less obvious for the making of a film becomes more complicated with regards to the exhibition. As we deal with artworks, their inherent form of, of presentation, its relation to space and time. An important moment for especially this show at Bina, at Bina Ellen was a conversation with the artist Martin Beck, um, as it has been a kind of starting point from which I was able to transform Godard's one plus one is three into the frame of the exhibition. Discussing his piece, which means entering into the work as described already, we extended his presentation by adding the panels in blue, yellow, and red. Some of you have already seen them. At the entrance is the blue one. Um, just a moment, I lost my line. Um, so, um, by adding the panels in blue, yellow, and red in order to enfold the filmic work, which creates, by definition, a space of its own, into the space towards the other works and uh, towards the other words. As, as such, the piece is still distinctive from other works, but clearly communicates with others via spatial relations. So this procedure has been repeated again and again by considering the spatial as well as well as symbolic condition of the institu institution itself, which means entering into a good, into, or as Godard put it, penetrating into the artwork and explore their own ability to communicate in the sense of one plus one is three. Accordingly, the exhibition relates works as an expression of temporary production 
and production context to one another in such a way that they can always be understood as work rehearsal that allow the audience to put themselves in the picture, which implies work, work on and with the exhibition. So uh, one, I just want to add one thing. We worked with a model uh, for this, of the space, which has served as a changeable, modifiable communication tool between us, between us and institutions, but also between, uh, with the artists. By doing so, the work of the exhibition becomes what the title suggests. It's about modeling and not about models. Um, now we have, um, we would like to ask the artists if they can say a few words on their specific words, works. Daina. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ilse. Thank you, Zabet. Thank you, Constanze, for inviting me to take part in this exhibition. Thank you, uh, Leonard B and Bina Allen Art Gallery, uh, Michel Theriot, uh, Hugues Dugas, and uh, Yasmin Tremblay, and the whole team. Um, I enjoy being here for the first time in uh, Montreal for these opening days and tour from uh, one gallery to another in the next days. Um, because I like to uh, check out different locations related each uh, to each other, as you might recognize by my contribution to this exhibition, Goethestraßen, you find in the entrance uh, room. Uh, presenting you images uh, of a continued pilgrimage uh, to a series of German and international Goethe streets as a kind of location test. Um, especially Goethe's letters encouraged me to realize this project uh, a long time ago. I started to gather and, and took pictures from one on, uh, uh, pictures of these uh, streets. Uh, but standing here, um, I will just uh, add uh, one point uh, about rehearsal or tests or training. It's a range of, range of uh, notions on, on these practices uh, about my most intimate experience with rehearsals. That was uh, the repetitive bar gymnastics I had to practice as pupil uh, in physical education. Um, every winter season uh, was scheduled for gymnastics and one whole winter I had trained one exercise, the running kip on the bar, to no end, uh, in vain. But then after the break of summer, one year later, in the next season, with my first trial, I succeeded in the running kip of the bar. bar. That taught me the unconscious part of the rehearsal process. Thank you. Mary Lou, would you like to talk about your work? <laughs> Hello. So, um, again, I would also say to the three creators that Richard and I, Richard is not here tonight, unfortunately, but we're very honored to be part of the exhibition. And our contribution is very discreet. Uh, it's actually in the three spaces in which the exhibition is taking place. And it's a publication or a script, to use the language of the curators. It's a set of cards that actually present uh, a way to enter performances that are invisible. They're invisible, but they're not inexistent. And the, actually the publication, which is just there, is made for you, the viewers, the people who visit, to have a way to enter into these performances that will not be visible. They're not visible because they happen in the off space of the exhibitions, or in the off space of exhibitions, uh, when the galleries are closed to the public we're done, they're not accessible. Thank you. Also, und dann nachher, wenn ich dann, was ist dann? Ja, also soll ich, ja? Okay, sorry, me again. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> as I'm also an artist of the exhibition, so I'm also supposed to thank the curators. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. And uh, the work that that's screen here, it's called Ex Love Scenes, and it's in the in this part of the exhibition. It's a projection. It's a, it's a film of 60 minutes, and in fact, it was the start, in a way, of our conversation because I have been asking Sabe to. Uh, to to reflect in a text on my work and actually you came up with isolating the subject of rehearsal in my work which I ne myself never noticed <laughs> it was there but she saw it because you're smart and so that's good and so um, <laughs> for me too <laughs> I'm working with smart curator that's very good and uh, and so I um, well, we started this conversation, and this is also why this film is here, because it was really sort of one of the, the initial moments and starting points of, of the whole discussion process. So I'm just saying a few words about the film. It's called Ex Love Scenes, and it belo belongs to a, a long series of, a series of six works that have been um, realized, six films that have been realized between 2001 and 2013, of which was the year in which the last production, which is also called Cold Rehearsal, so even there in the last production is the notion of rehearsal. And Ex Love Scene deals in very few words with an actress who has to um, uh, rehearse a love scene in a film studio with a director with whom she can cope and also vice versa. In fact, not with uh, she has to rehearse the love scene. In fact, not with a partner, but with an um, with a white with an with a black flag with a white chalk mark an X, and this goes back to a story that Maureen O'Hara, the Hollywood actress, was actually telling in her um, autobiography, where she was talking about a film that was called um, Against All Flags, where she was playing with Errol Flynn, and Errol Flynn, she said, was a great partner and a wonderful actor, but the problem was he was always drunk. So most of the love scenes she needed to perform towards a position mark, towards a black flag with a white chalk X. And you see outside, on the wall outside, when you, walk, when you look at the space from the outside, you see a reproduction of the prop, actually, from the film, which is this white chalk mark, from my film, not from, like, my film, uh, which is the white chalk mark on the black flag, and and it's a it's a film that only consists of failing rehearsals, basically of identities failing, of texts failing, of rehearsals failing, of a plot failing, um, and of um, a, a kind of trans transformation as well as you mentioned that rehearsal is also always, of course, as a, a process of transformation from one location that I would call zero to another location that I would call X, which is also mm -hmm. the position mark for the actress. And so from this position mark, I think we started also our conversation also between the three of us and, and it's gonna be continuing, it's gonna be shifting this position mark also in the future, so thank you. I just heard that also Klaus Scherübel arrived is he in the audience as one of the art artists i already mentioned in my paper so uh, thank you very much to uh, to sabet uh, constance and ilse uh, who invited me uh, to develop this uh, specific project for uh, for the exhibition well uh, sabet uh, already said uh, uh, a couple of things about it so it's uh, <coughs> So the, the frame of, of the exhibition is actually not, it, it will not be shown uh, in, in one of these uh, three exhibitions, but only in the, in the frame of, um, of uh, the announcement of the exhibitions. And, uh, and the work uh, is showing uh, this calendar uh, using a, a, a reproduction of, uh, of Edgar Degas, the repetition. And uh, the work which uh, unfold in time, so it starts uh, in the month of August, and it will uh, finish uh, with the month of uh, December. Okay, thank you. So, uh, yeah, well, uh, so, I mean, I could say like a, a lot of more things, but I think uh, you should discover it yourself, and uh, thank you. So thank you for being so patient and have a great um, experience of the exhibition, and we love to hear your comments and critique, and yes, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>